expecting warmer temperatures like Byron just talked about. We could face a wintry mix of rain and snow across the tri-state before that happens. Yeah, it's not the news that residents in Patterson, New Jersey want to hear as they are still trying to recover from devastating floods. So this morning we are checking in with Mayor Andre Sea to see how things are coming along and the Oscar for the most patient mayor this yes. morning. <laughs> mayor Sea, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you waiting for us here. Thank you. I really appreciate your sense of humor, and I think I have enough patience. I saw Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon. Oh, my gosh. Six hours. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, you do have the award for patience. Uh, so, anyway, let, let's get right to the to the topic at hand here, the, the wintry conditions. I mean, continuing to, with freezing temperatures, still blanketing our area. And then in Patterson, some of the residents there, they really had to brave the storm without any heat. So, have heat and electricity uh, been restored to most of those areas that have been impacted? Yes, there was one instance where a woman had a landlord who was not cooperating. So I went to the scene, called the landlord. Unfortunately, he was not very cooperative. So what I said to him was, if you don't turn on the heat, we're going to turn up the heat on you. And then all of a sudden, the heat came back on for that family. Wow. But it doesn't, ha it shouldn't have to get to that point. We have to sympathize with folks who have less and are struggling. And so because Mother Nature hasn't been cooperating, Patterson has to take the necessary preparations and precautions to protect our people. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, speaking of, you toured the, the flood areas alongside Governor Phil Murphy last week, right? And there's been a lot of talk about flood relief aid kicking in. So when can residents expect to see that and really start rebuilding their lives from some of the things they lost here? Dan, there's a whole host of measures. One, there's flood mitigation assistance where people can apply to have their properties elevated also, we applied for a grant through the Department of Community Affairs to build a flood resiliency wall mm. on McBride Avenue behind our fire headquarters where it tends to flood. Yeah. So that'll be helpful as well. And when the governor was here, he talked about buyouts. So for people who've been plagued by these problems as a result of severe flooding, there may be some level of relief for them. Yeah, I think that's what people are most concerned about. I mean, yeah. these are answers for now, but the long term solution and will there be funding for that? Yeah, the long term to me is the flood resiliency wall yeah. and then just taking other measures to combat the flooding. We know where it's happening. We know the flood prone zones. So we're going to have to focus like a laser on finding federal state funding to alleviate this long standing burden for our residents. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, keep us posted on that point, too, because it's something that we keep talking to you about over and over again. But while we have you, I want to talk about opioid addiction because it is a big topic, not only in your community, but really around the country. We're seeing this, right? And you're launching this thing called the Real Fix Program to address some of the issues. What exactly is the program, and have you seen it make a difference at all so far? So, Dan, a few years ago, Michael Bloomberg issued a global mayor's challenge. He said that if a municipality, a city wanted to win $1 million to implement an innovative idea to address a longstanding challenge, yeah. they could apply for this opportunity. 631 cities from around the world did. He only selected 15. Patterson was one of them. Our program is Real Fix. It's a hotline, 833-REAL-FIX, that anyone struggling with opioid use disorder can call. Five people as a part of the pilot program called, and we said we would get you medically assisted treatment within 90 minutes to help you heal your brain and wean yourself over whatever you're addicted to. And so when we piloted it, five people participated, we got it to them within 76 minutes. And how wow. it works is you call this 833 Real Fix, you're connected to a doctor, the doctor prescribes the medication, the Suboxone, and then afterwards, we also connect you with a counselor because we want to put you on a path to sobriety. Yeah, and hopefully so, more. So we so, so to date, I mean, it's been about a year. We got the million dollars. We were able to scale up because it was our chief innovation officer. But then he was able to hire two staff members. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we've helped about 213 people get treatment. Wow. So we still have work to do. And plus, two years ago, we created what's called the opioid response team, which is comprised of an EMT, a police officer, and a social worker. And they have reached out to individuals in targeted areas. And they've gotten almost 500 referrals for treatment as wow, well. That's so great. Well, those two programs buttress each other, the opioid response team plus the real fix program. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Before we let you go, we only have a couple of seconds. I understand the Patterson Fire Department made some history. We did. So I was proud, profoundly proud to appoint the first African-American permanent deputy fire chief. His name is Mike Hall. And hey. hope springs eternal for that young man. He could potentially become the first African-American fire chief in the city of Patterson one day. Well, that's All wonderful. right. 
All right, Patterson Mayor Andre Sea, thanks again for joining us and congratulations on your Oscar for patience. Come and see the Great Falls <laughs> again. I did. It looks a winter. What's a frozen igloo? Looks great. <laughs> Real nice. I'll post New about it. New meaning for winter wonderland. I'll post it. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Tag me. <laughs>